Epstein series, we are bringing back a case that has gone unsolved for nearly 35 years. This is Tara Colico. She is 19 years old when she vanished in 1988. Her parents have since passed away, and even the original sheriff on the case is gone. But the search for answers has not stopped, and one of Tara's friends from high school has spent more than a decade trying to solve the case. And we spoke with the lead investigator as well, who is assigned to Tara's disappearance, and he says they are closer than ever. It's a mystery that has perplexed the state of New Mexico and the nation for more than three decades. What happened to Tara Calico? A 19-year-old college student on her usual bike ride the morning of September 20th, 1988. But that day, Tara Calico wouldn't return home. There have been a number of rewards over the years, countless leads and tips, but still no answers. Police and Tara's loved ones say she left her house in Bellin, New Mexico around 9.30 in the morning, wearing a white t-shirt, gold hoop earrings, and white shorts with green stripes. She was riding a neon pink Huffy mountain bike and was last seen on Highway 47 in Valencia County. A witness saw a pickup truck following close behind Tara at a slow speed. She told her mom to come pick her up if she didn't get home by noon. Her mom sounded the alarm when she couldn't find Tara on her bike route. My team and I have already solved it. Roland and I don't agree on the details. Melinda Escobel is one of Tara's high school friends who spent years investigating the case on her own time. She met Tara in the high school marching band. She was a lot of fun. She liked to have fun. She liked to laugh. She just was just happy-go-lucky at that time, really, you know, doing what young girls at that age do. Escabel says she never fully processed the trauma of losing her friend until 2008, the 20th anniversary of her disappearance. Her mother sent her an article about Tara. I just burst into tears because it all came back. It's just stuck with me that after all this time, they didn't know what had happened. Now Escabel is working on a docu-series and has a podcast all about what she's dug up on the case. Thank you for listening to the latest episode of Vanished, the Tara Calico investigation. Escabel says the Valencia County Sheriff's Office gave her the chance to go through Tara's case files. She says she organized and digitized old files, worked with professional private investigators, and offered up her own findings to police. But after all these years, she isn't satisfied with how the case is being handled. These are sources that I spent years developing and, and gaining trust with, and a lot of that was broken. Lieutenant Joseph Rowland with the Valencia County Sheriff's Office was assigned to the case in 2016. He says he's in touch with Tara's sister, Michelle, regularly, and that outside help on the case has brought mixed results. Does it help or does it hinder? And the, and the answer is it does both, right? Uh, any information is better than no information. He says public trust in law enforcement was tarnished because of a local theory that the sheriff in 1988 was part of a cover-up. Online sleuths claim the son of Sheriff Lawrence Romero was involved in Tara's disappearance. Roland says he's working to clear up any misinformation. I have no, I have no dog in the fight. Wherever the facts are going to lead, I'm going to go. Sheriff Romero and his son have since passed away, and Roland says the theory was formally investigated, but never proven. There is another theory that surfaced online. About a year after Tara went missing, this Polaroid was found in a Florida parking lot, appearing to show a young woman and a little boy tied up in a van. Many people at the time, including Tara's mother, believe that girl was Tara. Analysts have never been able to tell for sure who is in the photo, and Lieutenant Rowland says the photo itself may not even be real. A lot of the little details that are in that photograph do not point to an abduction, but more of a gag photo. One thing Rowland and Escabel agree on is that the perpetrators are still alive and likely local. This case is solvable. Here we are 34 years later. I do not suspect that this case or Tara's disappearance will go unanswered for 36 years. It makes it sound like they're close, right? Tara's friend Melinda says that she and her family have been threatened for looking into the case, and she has her own theories about what happened, including someone stalking Tara after she turned down a date. Whether that is true remains a Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.